Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the Cambridge Central Mosque special Laylatul Qadr program of 2022. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Inna Lazina Qalu Rabbuna Allah Thumma Istaqamu Tatanazzanu Alayhim Al Malaika تتنزل عليهم الملائكة أن لا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا أن لا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إن وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ صدق الله العظيم الفاتحة جزاك الله خير إمام مصطفى. So welcome to our special Laylatul Qadr program. As we spend the moments leading up to this auspicious night, we will be taking some time speaking to various members of our community, understanding what we get up to here at Cambridge Central Mosque, the impact it has on our community, and most importantly, how your help continues to help us 
to create these fantastic events. So I'm first honoured to be joined by the Chair of the Trustees of Cambridge Central Mosque, who will kick off the programme with us. So Sheikh Abdul Hakim Arad, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So um, first things first, um, I'm really keen to hear from yourself the concept behind uh, Cambridge Central Mosque, please, if you could, in a few words. Well, it's uh, to some extent uh, an old story now. Uh, we've been working on it for more than 10 years. But the idea is that it would be uh, upping the game for British mosque construction and administration uh, in order to demonstrate to our neighbours and to the wider world Islam's commitment uh, to uh, the fight against climate change, uh, to the use of sustainability, green technologies, uh, and also uh, trying to produce a space that is authentically and recognisably British in its cultural inspiration, but nonetheless is evidently a mosque. Mm -hmm. So it has two principal purposes, as well as the most obvious uh, religious purpose, which is to make a statement about climate change and religion's responsibilities towards fighting that, but also to indicate that Islam is now a British religion rather than a bunch of minorities that are temporarily camped out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and in my humble opinion, this place absolutely uh, meets, those, uh, meets those goals. Um, tell me a bit about... Um, how this special night um, links back to uh, the, the, sort of the goals of Cambridge Central Mosque. Laylus al Qadr is upon us, uh, inshallah. We will be spending um, tonight here in, in worship. Um, how does this space really help um, sort of give, give this night even more uh, meaning and purpose? Well, logistically, of course, it's a kind of stress test, really, uh, because we've obviously been through the, the pandemic and several lockdowns when the mosque was empty or almost empty. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Ramadan, we're more or less back to normal. Uh, and this is obviously going to be the busiest night. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what level of activity we have here. I was just last week in Medina, where the mosque was at uh, full capacity, 780,000. <laughs> extraordinary Allah. numbers. Second biggest building in the world now, Mashallah. after the Boeing factory in Seattle. It's extraordinary. Um, we're not quite on that scale, but nonetheless, it's going to be bursting at the seams, and it's going to be really interesting to see how we conserve the serenity and the blessedness of this occasion, while at the same time, logistically, just uh, making room for people and making sure that mm -hmm. nobody's left out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I'm personally very excited uh, for the program that we have up ahead, and also the in-person program that will be held uh, here at Cambridge Central Mosque in the evening. Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad, you'll be um, talking there um, at the program, I believe. That's right. It won't be terribly long, but I'll be spending 10, 15 minutes or so talking about Laylat al-Qadr, its significance, the state in which our hearts should be at this time, having been softened by 26, 27 days of fasting. Mm -hmm. We should be up for a really good tarawih, a really good attentiveness, inshallah. and inshallah, spending the whole night, inshallah, in, in, in blessed activities. Inshallah, inshallah. Well, we look forward to um, hearing this, uh, this talk uh, later on this evening. Um, for those of you that will be blessed enough to join us here in Cambridge Central Mosque, you'll be... Um, very welcome, and inshallah, we'll see you there, Sheikh Abdul Kimar. Thank you very much for, for joining us on the program thank today. Thank you. See you later. Inshallah. So, um, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad um, also introduced our online Ramadan campaign. This year we titled it Realize Ramadan. I think this is a really um, important title. It's centered around how we as the community, we as individuals, can unlock the benefits of Ramadan and carry them forward into the rest of the year. There's loads to talk about and loads that we launched this year, but instead of me talking about it, how about we watch it through our trailer? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and Ramadan Mubarak. Now this Ramadan here at Cambridge Central Mosque, we're going to give you the keys to realize Ramadan, trying to unlock the potential of this really amazing time by opening the doors, the abwab of forgiveness, maghfirah and rewards and all of the barakah of the month. So every single day during the month, our imams are going to be asking you to think about some key questions, ayahs in each juz of the Holy Quran, ayahs that ask us to think about our niyya or directly call us to action to do something in this month with cues from the Qur'an. Also this year we're going to be launching a, a brand new series on du'a which we're calling Du'as Before Dusk and these focus on one du'a in each episode. 
covering its meaning, the context, the history and the actual use of the prayer. Also, in addition to that, we're going to be continuing our study circles, exploring key themes, stories from Qur'an and Hadith in studying sacred scripture. Saturday afternoons, in the main prayer hall, we're going to be holding some amazing talks from special guests and inspirational Islamic speakers, and these will, inshallah, also be published online later for everyone to, to catch up with. We're also bringing back our, our popular Kids' Corner, this time in person, with special activities for children from amazing, fun arts and crafts to uh, interesting educational storytelling for the little ones. Also this year, we're going to be live streaming our Tarawih prayers as well as the Adhan for Fajr and Maghrib. So this Ramadan, make sure you follow us on Instagram for these live broadcasts. Subscribe to our uh, now well-known YouTube channel and to our new podcasts on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. For more general announcements about what's going on, follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Check our website where we're also bringing back Ramadan TV, 24 hours a day with documentaries, lectures, and amazing Islamic songs and nasheeds from around the whole Ummah. So from thinking carefully about verses in the Qur'an to sincerely connecting with some of those precious du'as that we say, this year, why not really realize Ramadan by grabbing these keys and holding on to them long after the end of this uh, special blessed time, inshallah. And finally, don't forget to support your mosque by donating generously, either in person or online at cambridgecentralmosque.org. So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. What an action-packed Ramadan online. Alhamdulillah for all of the uh, series that we released uh, this year. I particularly enjoyed personally the um, du'as before dusk, a, a fantastic short snippet um, reminder of what Ramadan is truly about. Um, let us know in the YouTube comments, um, in the YouTube chat, uh, what your favourite series was. We'd love to, uh, to hear from you as well. So, alhamdulillah, we've been blessed with an absolutely beautiful space, a beautiful building, award-winning. It's a, an oasis of calm, of serenity, for the local community and those just passing by as well. But it's what we do inside the building which is what really makes this building a mosque. Besides accommodating worshippers for prayers, we have um, weddings, nikah ceremonies here, we conduct funerals here, janazas, um, we offer classes, um, we provide support for those wanting to embrace Islam via shahada ceremonies, we distribute food to the needy, and we do all of this for you guys, our community, um, the worldwide community at large. Today we're going to look um, at uh, these um, services in, in a bit more detail and we'll be asking you for your continued support as we look to further grow all of the um, fantastic services that Cambridge Central Mosque provides to the community. Your support is absolutely vital. Um, all of our costs from Imam's wages to ground staff to cleaning, maintaining facilities, gardens, upkeep, supplemental electricity and many, many more, just to name some, are covered solely by your generous donations. And we will look forward to your continued support as we look to grow and prosper into 2022 and beyond. So there are details uh, on, the, uh, on the screen, donation details to uh, the left hand of your screen. Um, please donate generously. Um, you can donate at any point in the program. We look forward to your continued support. You've got options um, via online bank transfer. Give us a ring and you can also uh, send us a check as well. So um, I'll be joined today by various guests. We'll be speaking about some of the services that I mentioned um, today. Um, and the first guest that I'm very pleased to, um, to have alongside us is I Imam Sayyad. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. The pleasure is ours. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for, for, joining us, um, for joining us here today. So Imam Sayyad, um, I've pretty much grown up um, in, your, in your sort of uh, guidance um, and I'm very pleased that um, on the first day that we were hopeful to host um, a public salah here, uh, you, um, you hosted that and I was standing behind you. So just tell us a bit about um, your experience at Cambridge Central Mosque thus far. You've been here since, uh, since inception, since opening. Yeah, I have to say, first and foremost, we have to be so grateful to our Lord, to our cherisher, who is so kind and generous, 
who facilitated such a beautiful building, such a beautiful space, place of worship for our community here in Cambridge in this beautiful university and historic city. So for me, it's a true honor to be serving here in this building, to know that more or less half of my life I also spent in this city. It's truly amazing, remarkable. So when we held that very first Friday prayer about three years ago, I just couldn't hold my emotions. It was just overwhelming. And to see some of the faces that I left a few years before that, when I decided to go for Bosnia, and some of my former students grown so much, and some of them as well having their own children now, it's just truly amazing. It's remarkable. Fantastic. Well, the, the prayer and worship is obviously a fantastic um, part of what we do here at Cambridge Central Mosque, but there's also so much more that goes on. So Imam Said, could you tell us a bit more about um, some of the the other activities that uh, that you get up to and that we get up to here at Cambridge Central Mosque, please. Yes, yeah, so we are really, you know, blessed with a lovely, wonderful team of people who work here and so many, many volunteers, you know, highly skilled people, highly educated people, uh, very intelligent, very smart. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are a really diverse community, but as I said, highly professional and educated so we are so lucky that we have such you know community such uh, members of our community who can put up any wonderful program so that our community primarily our children and youth can benefit from mm -hmm. so of course you know our place uh, here is primarily a place of worship so we all intend you know when we come here to pray to god to, to emerge, you know, deep in, in prayers, facing the Qibla, facing the same direction, following our Imams. I have lovely colleagues as well. Uh, so it is a really beautiful environment, a beautiful, you know, space to spend your time in after having a busy day perhaps at work mm -hmm. or, or not finding enough adequate space back at home and children are making noises. This is the right place to find, you know, solace, peace mm -hmm. and tranquility that we all, you know, crave for. Mm -hmm. So uh, we basically focus on daily worship in, in the building here. We lead uh, daily prayers. We hold more or less daily talks, uh, study circles, focusing on our sacred scripture, mm -hmm. the Holy Quran and the sayings the beloved of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu the wise sayings of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu So we feel that any Muslim who grows up and they basically don't, feel the sweetness. They don't taste the sweetness of praying together in yeah. a congregation. Yes. And studying the sacred scripture together, it's a big miss basically in their life. Mm -hmm. So our focus really is on daily prayers, almost uh, daily study circles, but we, ho we have our weekly uh, worship, which is the Friday uh, sermon, the Friday prayer, which is also like uh, our like festival, weekly festival. And we are so honored to have this house full. Mm -hmm. every single Friday, yes, people absolutely. coming from, from everywhere. But in addition to that, of course, uh, like you said earlier on, we really wanted to make sure that every single key stage of our existence in this worldly life is actually marked in this very building. Mm -hmm. So we are so lucky and honored to celebrate you know, the new arrivals in our community here hold aqiqas, you know. So since the birth, we want to see a child as young as possible coming through our beautiful doors and mm -hmm. spending time here and taking the blessings of this yeah. beautiful and stunning place. But then, of course, we have lovely, you know, ceremonies for weddings. And yeah. this, particularly this summer, we expect to have every week several, you know, mm -hmm. a few number of yeah. uh, nikahs being held. It's a beautiful venue, you know, to... To, to commemorate and to, to, to remember one of, arguably one of the most important dates in one's life mm -hmm. as well. But as you mentioned as well, you know, our, the cycle of our life will also come to an end. Yes. So we need to offer that service too, which is the funerals. So we have a really good, lovely facility for the wash, uh, the washing of the bodies. So in, in a way, you know, to perform a funeral prayer for someone in this, you know, nice and calm, uh, space is very reassuring for the family mm -hmm. when they are facing the, you know, arguably the hardest calamity that we can face in our lifetime. So a complete cycle of life really takes place mm -hmm. in here. Uh, but I have to emphasize the youth, the kids. So we are so honored to, ha to have started this program at a larger scale, yeah. providing classes and lessons for our children Not in sure, this yeah. community. And, you know, I've been here almost 
20 years, yeah. uh, like we said, I'm really impressed how many more children we have in yes. comparison to 17 there or was, 20 there was years a, There ago. was a lot fewer when I was a kid here. Yeah. But alhamdulillah, we now have many more kids running around the masjid and I think this is a, it's a fantastic Beautiful. thing for, for Cambridge, fantastic thing for, um, for Islam. Um, and, and I really want to touch on um, Imam Sayyad a really interesting point that you have a particular focus on is interfaith activities as well. Yes. And this is another part of the services that, that we host here at Cambridge Central Mosque. So um, in a few short words, um, your, your take on the, the events that we hold uh, with regards to interfaith activities. Yes, so we are also, you know, honored that in this beautiful historic city, there are so many churches mm -hmm. and other faith communities, uh, and they are quite active mm -hmm. and, and working nicely with ourselves, between them. So sometimes we receive invitations to go and visit another faith community. For yeah. example, nobody probably will even think of it, but there's a Buddhist center here. Yes, we have a good relationship yeah. with, with, with yeah. the Buddhist community here. Not to say about, you know, St. Paul's Church, which is just around the corner, our neighbors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the Church of England faith community is quite large in Cambridge and in this area. So we are really, you know, uh, pleased to say that we have a really healthy, good working relationship yeah. with other faith communities here. Uh, we held recently an open iftar and, and we had a reverend come to speak about fasting in their tradition in Christianity, but we also had somebody representing a, a small Jewish community. Mm -hmm. There are two synagogues here in yeah. Cambridge. Um, obviously, there's a Roman Catholic Church, Methodist Church. We have also Greek Orthodox Church, and all those people more or less have come to visit us, and mm -hmm. I've tried my very best to go and visit as many of those places as I can. Mm -hmm. And it just happened to be like this year and the last couple of years, uh, our first festive season is at, at the same time more or less is the yeah. Easter time it's yes, Ramadan exactly. time Eid and also the Jewish community commemorate at this very time and we have so much in common really mm -hmm. to say like our Sheikh mentioned you know we are all in this you know joint fight against you yeah. know the climate change and what's happening in the world so the Buddhist community and other uh, faith and no faith communities basically they are all uh, appealing to all of us, to our common sense, to preserve this beautiful planet, mm -hmm. to work together to eradicate any kind of hatred and prejudice in our communities. So I'm really, you know, honored to be part of this project mm -hmm. and among such a, you know, diverse and, and, and healthy uh, multi-faith uh, community that we have here yeah. in Cambridge. Well, we're equally honored to have you, Imam Sayyad. Thank you very much for it's spending your time to, to come and speak to, to myself and our viewers online as well. Um, so inshallah, we'll be, uh, we'll be continuing our conversation now. So thank you very much, Imam Sayyad, for joining us. All the us. very best. Thank, thank you, you very much. Assalamu alaikum. So, very pleased to be joined by our principal Imam, Imam Sayyad Mekic. He mentioned around how we host a number of different services here at Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, he mentioned nikahs, he mentioned janazas. Um, and, and I think a really important one here is perhaps the starting of the journey of Islam for, for many, many people, um, and that is um, Shahadas. So inshallah, today we'll be joined by um, two very uh, special and inspiring uh, individuals who took their Shahadas um, at Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, first, uh, I'm going to introduce Alison Osborne, but before we welcome Alison um, onto uh, the stage with us, uh, I'm going to um, ask, uh, let's have a look at a really inspiring video um, filmed here in Cambridge Central Mosque of her Shahada, please. Thank you everybody for coming along this evening. Ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, uh, school kids especially welcome, bringing lots of blessings. Hope you're enjoying yourselves. And it's a special time to see your teacher taking this major step, a great step. So it's really appreciated that you could be here to show your kind of solidarity for your favorite teacher, right? Favorite teacher? Good. Alhamdulillah. Today, I am enormously happy. I have no regrets to what I'm doing. Everything is beautiful in Islam. It facilitates my mind and body. A repeat prescription, if you like, a daily routine through prayer and recitation, the meditation, all in its beauty. Islam is peace. In this sacred place, a blessed day, all gathered here together, this is so special for me. A lifetime of beautiful tomorrows, accomplished dreams, east and west, united in faith, friendship and love. My every intention, a gift from God, the greatest blessing. 
May I close and leave you with these words as I continue and declare my journey into Islam in all righteousness and in true light of the Lord. From Al-Bayina 98.8 Their reward is with their Lord, gardens of eternity through which streams flow. They will abide therein forever. Allah is well pleased with them and they are pleased with him. This is for those who fear his Lord. Al-Baqarah 2.153 Therefore, remember me, and I will remember you. Be thankful to me, and do not be ungrateful for me. Amen. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. Words direct from the heart to the heart. So we will pass now to the uh, formal shahada, and we'll do it in the uh, classical way. I will repeat the words of the shahada, first in Arabic, word by word, and then afterwards in English. And then we will close, inshallah, with a dua. So, uh, sister, if you can say these words after me. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An la. An la. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Rasulu, Rasulu, Allah. Allah. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no deity. That there is no deity except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad. That Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Is the messenger of Allah. Alhamdulillah. So, Sister Allison is now truly a sister one of us. No doubt there will be many hugs on their way. So I'll just keep it short and inshallah close with a, uh, with a brief for up. Allah, such an inspiring story. I'm so pleased to be joined here today then by um, by Alison herself. Salam yeah. alaikum, yeah. Alison. Well, How are you? Salam. Yeah, very well, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, it was so great watching that video and seeing the delight on your face, the delight on the face of the community that you took your shahada in. Um, just tell me a bit about this. I'm really interested, um, and I'm sure the viewers are as well. What was it like um, taking your shahada here at Cambridge Central Mosque? Uh, for me, it was the most amazing experiment experience. One, because I was born right next to where the mosque has been built um, in, on the 5th of August, 1969. And so it brings me back to a place uh, where I feel very, very truly blessed to mm -hmm. be in. Um, yeah, and the experience was amazing. Yeah, I was at peace and I had all my Muslim friends around me. Fantastic. And yeah, alhamdulillah, it was the best thing. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, that's so, that's so great to hear. That's so great to hear. So, um, Asad, if you could tell um, our viewers, what was the process of um, taking the Shahada? What did, um, what did you have to do and how did Cambridge Central Mosque help you uh, on, this, on this journey and in this um, process? Well, I, I had to, um, well, I, I read lots and lots of bits and pieces about mm -hmm. um, the Shahada, first of all, which was sent by the office to me with a bit of a breakdown yeah. of what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and really, right from the minute I stepped through the mosque doors, I was, uh, I was embraced and made very welcome. I was put totally at ease. And yes, um, I just had to really, well, I prepared myself for my testimony, as what you can see there. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I made a good attempt at that. And yes. also, I was supported very much so by my Muslim uh, friends, who, were, as you can see, were in the in the background. And that helped me along so much, yeah. you know, with this. Um, but yes, uh, Cambridge Central Mosque prepared me so, so well uh, for my Shahada, yes. So 
Mashallah, that's, that's fantastic yeah. to hear. And finally, you mentioned around how you felt really at ease, welcomed, you felt the peace when you entered this space. How much does that have to do with the way that the building is created, um, the natural colours, uh, the way that it's structured, and the way that the, sort of the facilities are laid out? How does that, um, how does that, that help in, in that process? Of being yeah, well, for, for me, stepping in through here, it's, it's just so peaceful and everything's so pure. I like all the arabesque designs. I just like everywhere it's set up, you know, all, all the Arabic uh, calligraphy for me, you know, as a new Muslim, very, very nice. Um, you know, and everything's just so peaceful. It is really peaceful. Just the way the design, it's very eco, you know, and it's just everything's been, uh, you know, the skylights, everything, the light that comes in, you know, it's just so powerful. Yeah, yeah it's really, absolutely. really amazing. Could, could not agree more about mm. the way that the architecture is. I personally feel very... Um, very close to this building as well. Um, the, the building process itself has sort of spanned my life, lifetime, much like yourself. I've, I've lived in Romsey for, for many, many years. Okay, nice. So um, thank you very much, mm. Alison, for, yeah. for coming to join us. Yeah, thank you very and inshallah, much. Yeah. You'll continue to enjoy this blessed space just as much as everyone else. Yeah, I hope so, inshallah. 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 Thank alaykum. you very much. Wa alaikum salam. So what an inspiring story um, from Alison. Um, it's really great to see um, people like Alison uh, come to Cambridge Central Mosque, feel so welcome, feel at ease, and then take their Shahada ceremony in, in the most inspiring of places. We couldn't do these types of um, services um, without uh, the support and your generous continued support. We have many volunteers um, here at Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, they are essential to our uh, continued um, sort of success. Uh, we also have key staff, uh, essential ground staff, uh, administrators. We've got a director that's actually unpaid. Um, we have our three uh, imams um, and all of their salaries need to be covered as well. So a considerable expense um, in the people department um, at, here at Cambridge Central Mosque. And those people, as Alison mentioned, are what really help bring this space to life and really help welcome um, new, new members to, to Islam. You'll see uh, on the left hand of your screen now um, uh, a bit of a breakdown of our annual expenses. Um, and the top one that we've got here, £160,000 estimated is for people. So the fantastic people that make this mosque um, uh, are here just because of your continued support. And inshallah today and continued, uh, you will continue to support um, this fantastic endeavour. So on the same topic, um, we're now joined by um, uh, another um, uh, individual that has recently taken their shahada at, at Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, he's a, a good friend of ours, and he's also a very regular volunteer at Cambridge Central Mosque now. So, Connor Prentice, nice to, nice to meet you. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you very much for, for joining us here. Um, so, you're one of the regular volunteers here at Cambridge Central Mosque, um, Connor. How does it feel, um, and, and how is that experience of being here regularly volunteering affected your journey to Islam and beyond? It's made a massive difference. I mean, I feel like especially I took my shahada during the pandemic, mm -hmm. the height of the pandemic. So, yeah. yeah, it was absolutely incredible. Such a unique opportunity to be able to, you know, get involved yeah. more and get to know the community a bit more. Absolutely. And yeah, alhamdulillah, it was absolutely incredible. Yeah, so a difficult time during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, how did Cambridge Central Mosque and this sort of the, the belonging that you feel here help you in, in that time as it was, I'm guessing, very difficult for yourself and as, as it was for many others uh, around the world? I mean, it was, it was kind of just a base to kind of, you know, come here, pray and yeah. get to interact with lots of different community members, um, interact with the imams and the staff, They're all incredible people. And yeah, alhamdulillah, like it's, it's one of those things where you're locked up for so long, yeah. and then you get to come back and get to pray like so, shoulder to shoulder. And yes. Yeah, alhamdulillah, it's absolutely incredible. Alhamdulillah, that experience of praying shoulder to shoulder is unmatched, and, and we're very blessed to be able to do this here daily at Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, so, Connor, um, we spoke about your shahada. We just heard from, from Alison. If you could give me your thoughts on um, what, was the, what was the service like, um, and, and how was the sort of preparation leading up to, um, to the process of taking the shahada? Yeah, it was really, really well put together. Obviously, I was very nervous to start with. Yeah, um, I can didn't really, didn't really know what to expect. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, when I came here, everyone was very accommodative. Um, you know, uh, Imam Sayyad um, conducted my shahada. Yeah. Um, he kind of, uh, what I found really personal to me mm -hmm. was that he kind of walked my parents, who were there as well. Yeah. Who were Christian. Yeah. Kind of walked them through comparing different, um, you know prayers and stuff like that kind of comparing them to like the lord's prayer mm -hmm. and stuff like that and and mm -hmm. it was just yeah I, 
it just meant a lot to me personally mm -hmm. because obviously yeah. my parents were probably more nervous than I was. Um, so yeah. if, if that's possible. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. And, and, and again, like everyone was there, like all, all my friends and family, it was yeah. alhamdulillah. So, Fantastic. Yeah. And obviously what more that, you know, you can't pick a more beautiful place. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to enjoy that process, enjoy that ceremony. And we're so glad to have your continued support as a volunteer here at Cambridge Central Mosque. So thank you. Thank you very much, Connor, for joining thank us. Thank you very much. As Salam alaikum. Mashallah, it's these types of conversations that really um, sort of fill my heart. Uh, and I'm sure they are filling your heart uh, at home as you're watching us um, on our special Laylatul Qadr, Qadr program uh, in 2022 here at Cambridge Central Mosque. So um, we spoke about the impact that our people have um, on Cambridge Central Mosque, our imams, our administration staff, our volunteers. Um, without these people, none of this stuff um, could, uh, could happen. So your continued support is absolutely vital for ensuring that we can continue to offer services like the one to, to Connor and to Alison uh, continued in the future. So we request you humbly, please continue to donate generously. Uh, on the left hand of your screen, there are a number of options available. Um, you can see right here, um, donate online. The easiest way to do it, just click on the link. It's also in the YouTube um, uh, channel that you're following us on. Uh, bank transfer, give us a ring or send us a check, inshallah. We will continue to uh, the program now. So one of the ways that um, you uh, can, uh, can support us is um, by becoming an official Cambridge Central Mosque Life member. Now, um, I'm going to be joined by um, an individual who is a very regular volunteer here. Um, he, uh, I affectionately call him Mama, which, is, which means um, uncle. Um, and he, he's been such a huge part of the community here and has sort of gone that extra step further and become uh, an official Cambridge Central Mosque Life member. So uh, introducing now uh, Mr. Abdul Hai Mama. Assalamu Salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalam. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Yes. Pop your, pop your mic up. There we go. Make sure that everyone else can hear the, the goodness coming out of your mouth, as, as I can. Um, so, um, Mama, why did you um, choose to become a life member at Cambridge Central Mosque? I mean, most of my life I've been in this city. Yeah. And uh, nothing like this has ever, in our dream, that we thought it would happen. Mm -hmm. Iconic mosque and the first eco-friendly mosque in Europe. Yeah. So it's my honor to be a life member in this mosque. And... I can't be more happier than that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And I think the, uh, the important thing to tell you guys here is what is a life member? So um, a life member is, is basically a continued supporter of Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, they, they pledge their, their heart, their soul, their du'as, um, and um, some very important funds that help us run this place um, to uh, the Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, anything to add there, Mama? What, is, what does being a life member mean to you? Uh, it's a gift Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in this city with residents. We would never expect it that would happen. And I urge everyone, be a part of it. Be a life member. Work for the mosque. You know, it's our mosque and we have to look after this. Mm -hmm. And constant donation is very important. Yeah. So we have to donate yeah. generously to this mosque to Absolutely. keep it going. Absolutely. And you mentioned around how... Um, you feel like being a life member and being able to contribute to the success of Cambridge Central Mosque is a gift. Uh, and that's exactly how I feel as well. This is, this is a gift given to us by Allah, uh, the opportunity to help Cambridge Central Mosque uh, and build a space like this, curate a space like this, is what really um, life membership is all about, right? All about. So Jazakallah, thank you very much for joining thank us, you Mama. Salam. Uh, inshallah, we'll Salam see you alaykum. later on tonight. Inshallah. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So um, we couldn't exist, um, as I've said many times, but I'll uh, absolutely repeat myself. We couldn't exist without the continued support um, of those of you that have joined us officially as life members and those of you that continue to donate to us um, via this online, uh, this online stream, uh, in person um, and through our various charity uh, fundraising events that we hold across the year. Uh, so the money raised um, at Cambridge Central Mosque helps um, is for the community and, and community is, is a really important aspect of our ethos here um, at, uh, at Cambridge Central Mosque. 
Um, so what I would love to do now is, um, is move the conversation on slightly to a, uh, another really important service that we offer to our community. Um, we've spoken about uh, the Shahada ceremonies and the impact that has on people's lives starting their journey in Islam. Um, and now we're going to talk um, to um, a brother um, here who's going to talk to us about um, the Janazah ceremonies that we um, are able to hold here at Cambridge Central Mosque. Brother Mohsin Hussain, Asalaamu As Alaikum. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, yeah, shukran. Thank you very much for, very for joining us. Just hold your, your mic up. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. It's super. So, um, uh, Mohsin Hussain is um, one of the uh, partners um, over at uh, Cambridge and Peterborough Muslim Funeral Services. So, in addition to um, providing the Janaza services um, here at Cambridge Central, uh, Cambridge Central Mosque, um, you also ran a, a whistle workshop very recently. Indeed, so, um, yeah. let's take a quick look at, at a clip from that workshop uh, to give our viewers a bit of an idea of what we got up to on that day. To be completely private and again, if you remember, the bit I explained about the back. Yeah? So, as you're trying the back, you're also trying the bench. Yeah? Normally, there's two or three towels that we use. Yeah? So, we use one for the upper part, one for the lower part, and then one extra leg if we need. Yeah? Now, the whole bench is dry, and the bay is completely dry. The only thing that's wet is this cloth here. So we're not going to remove this just yet. What we're going to do is the towel, one of the towels, out of three or out of two, we're going to be replacing so that. Well, that was a sneak peek to a video that we'll be releasing very shortly on our social media channels. Um, subscribe to our YouTube, uh, follow us on Instagram, make sure you keep up to date with Cambridge Central Mosque. So, Brother Mohsin, um, can you tell us a bit about what we, uh, what we got up to uh, on that day for the, uh, for the Gushal workshop? So, it's, it's, it's so much needed uh, for where the um, people know how to do the ritual washing mm -hmm. in Islam. So, in, for that purpose, we arranged a workshop for the Muslims to come here and learn how to perform the ghusls. Uh, so that was the whole concept. And it's important for everyone to know how to do this, of course, because they're gonna, mm -hmm. there's going to come a time for them Absolutely. in their life where yep. they will going to be, or they are going to be watching their, mm -hmm. their loved one. Mm -hmm. And in that, I mean, we, we often see that um, when families are put in this position, yeah. they don't completely understand or uh, know what exactly to do. So this whole uh, workshop was so we could explain and train them, of course. And, and this is such an important aspect of, um, of, sort of community um, here in Cambridge. We, we really needed this facility here. So yes. what do you think having this facility and having the, the, sort of the, the services and the staff around yeah. um, means to the community in Cambridge? Well, the masjid being the masjid, every masjid needs mm -hmm. a, um, a ghusl room. And of course, uh, they need to facilitate the funerals, uh, regardless. Uh, you know, it, it is, I mean, they are going to be janazas, regardless yeah. where, where where they're going to be taking place. So, yeah. where's the best place, the masjid, because of space mm -hmm. we need. Um, so, yeah, um, a, a ghusl room or a mortuary room to yeah. be set yeah. in a masjid is vital. Yeah. It's very important. Mm -hmm. And then the one that we have here in Cambridge Mosque is amazing, mashallah, with yeah. all the facilities that we have. Yeah. Um, and it's important, of course, that yeah. we have uh, these sort of facilities facilitating for our people, our yeah. community. Yeah, so those facilities are so important. Um, <coughs> we were able to put these facilities into Cambridge Central Mosque because of the fact that we purpose-built the space. Um, so, Brother um, Mohsin, the space that we've got and the facilities that we've got here at Cambridge Central Mosque, how do they help you as a funeral director in your, in your role? Um, yeah, so as a funeral director, wherever we are going to be going to, or whichever masjid we're going to be going to, to utilize that mortuary or that ghusl area. For us, it will be a lot easier and a lot better if we have all those facilities that are available. Um, that could mean uh, good water facilities, yeah, water facilities um, and absolutely. then of course the washing bench needs to yeah. be you know, mm -hmm. uh, good and secure yeah. uh, and um, uh, it needs to be of course in a position where it, it's all, you know, we, we can work on it because there could be some difficulties if mm -hmm. it's not the correct one. Absolutely. Uh, that's just one of uh, the, the main important ones. Uh, we, we need these facilities in mm -hmm. place mm -hmm. so we can conduct 
the best way forward for the Ghusls. Makes sense. Place. Makes yeah. sense. Well, um, Brother Mohsen mentioned around how it was really important to have uh, facilities in place in Cambridge Central Mosque. Now, these facilities obviously um, attract with it uh, cost of building. Uh, alhamdulillah, we are now in a position that the, the build has been done, but utilities um, continue to add uh, significant costs um, to the running of the space. Um, Brother Mohsen mentioned around the, the water costs, etc., etc. Now, we're re really lucky to have in Cambridge Central Mosque um, some fantastic uh, sort of advanced technologies installed. One of those technologies is the wastewater recycling. So water used um, during the wudu process and also water collected as from, the, from the roof, uh, rainwater, we get a lot of that in Cambridge, is, uh, goes downstairs, recycled, and then used to irrigate the gardens and flush the toilets. But um, with this comes a significant cost in terms of uh, maintenance and repair. So um, the, the wastewater recycling is just one of those technology features. We've got um, the air source heat pumps, we've got the garden, we've got the building management system. All of these attract significant costs. And as you can see on the left hand of your screen again now, um, the maintenance and repairs um, uh, cost Cambridge Central Mosque about £60,000 per year. So uh, once again, to reiterate, um, we, we ask you humbly to donate generously because all of these costs are solely covered by your um, generous donations. So you've got multiple ways to donate uh, today and help us. Uh, inshallah, cambridgecentralmosque.org.uk. Um, please uh, visit the website. That's the easiest way to donate online. Uh, telephone, give us a ring. Um, come and visit us in person. You can, uh, you can see the fantastic mosque yourself um, and also donate uh, in person too. So a plea from myself, please continue to generously supports Cambridge Central Mosque. So I'm very pleased now um, to introduce um, our newest Imam, Imam Zakaria, who currently heads up our new Madrasa program. Now Imam Zakaria um, actually is my neighbor as well. So um, we, I get to see him fantastic uh, all the time, whether walking along the street or in the masjid. So Imam Zakaria, thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I hope I'm a pleasant neighbor, you, both you, in the mosque are. and in life. <laughs> you are indeed. I can, I can safely attest he is a very good, very good neighbor to have. Thank um, you very if much. If only he was slightly closer, I might be able to hear his, um, his recitations um, early in the morning. But alas, I can only hear the sort of the hustle and bustle of our daily lives. But alhamdulillah, we have Cambridge Central Mosque. We can come and, we can come and listen to you here. Yeah. Joined for Fajr. Absolutely. Alhamdulillah. So, um, Imam Zakaria, um, you're the newest Imam here at Cambridge Central Mosque. You've very recently set up the Madrasa program. Um, can you just tell um, myself and our viewers a bit about why the Madrasa program is so important uh, here in Cambridge? Um, first of all, um, Alhamdulillah for the blessing of being able to uh, establish this program. It is only from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hard work of all the volunteers, the staff, the community who have worked for years and years and years to put this building together mm -hmm. that we can bring soul into this body. Yeah. And that soul is the people. Mm -hmm. The most important of them are the children. Yeah. They are the youth. They are um, the future of our faith. And 21st century British Islam depends upon them. Mm -hmm. Our dear Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Hakim, spoke about the identity in British Islam. Yeah. How is it that a young person growing up can be positive, productive, contributing to society, yeah. but also be fully adhering to the elements of mm -hmm. their faith that are so dear to them. Yeah. Fantastic. And they come to this building, yes. they meet other people their age, they speak to one another, yeah. they ask questions, mm -hmm. they uh, engage in um, conversations, uh, spirituality, what is the soul, what does our Lord want from us, what yeah. are the prophetic traditions, mm -hmm. what are supplications we can make. They learn a little bit about the Quran and they run around a little bit. We try to keep them, uh, <laughs> we try to keep the balance between, um, you know, people that want to pray quietly and yeah, kids yeah. that want to is that, is enjoy that part love. of the official curriculum though like the the 30 meter dash from one end to the other it looks like a, a, tr a race track um, yeah yeah so uh, <laughs> but no it's not part of the curriculum um, nonetheless they make sure that uh, they get a little bit of uh, steps in fantastic. while they are here fantastic fantastic so um, by the sounds of it it's going it's going very well how many children do you have enrolled so far that's a great question actually um, you know somebody asked me um, 
this question, uh, how many kids do you have? And I said, I'm not sure, somewhere a little bit of over 150, between 150 and 160, and they gave me a really surprised look. Um, me not knowing they weren't talking about the madrasa program. So mm -hmm. yeah, we have between 150 and 160 children, Masha and um, um, hundreds um, more looking to join. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we're doing the best we can. We just started the program. We yeah. have eight teachers, and yeah. uh, the response has been remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, people love coming here, and um, I just pray to Allah that we're able to continue to to do this good work and. Um, and do justice to the rights of our youth, which is to convey um, uh, sacred knowledge to them. Mm -hmm. And this can only be done in this beautiful building with the support of the community and the donation of the community. Jazakumullah Jazakum for khair. your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Imam Zakaria, for joining us. No problem And you, at all. you mentioned some really great points that I want to just double click on again. Um, you mentioned around um, the importance of the people, the teachers that we have here, the administration staff, this type of program, 150 children, um, needs a lot of administration to, to run. Um, I don't know whether he could sort of run 150 kids um, on his own. Um, whoever he was speaking to clearly thinks that he might have had 150 kids. But uh, inshallah, uh, with your continued and generous support, we will be able to further expand this program. And I want to really um, double click on the importance of sacred knowledge that Imam Zakari mentioned. Now, sacred knowledge is, is something that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has gifted upon us um, and also is our, um, I guess, duty to, to spread this to our children, to the community at large. Um, so I want to just highlight um, digital communications um, as a really important um, expense that we have here um, at, uh, at Cambridge Central um, Cambridge Central Mosque. Digital communications relate to things such as our recently uh, released podcast, uh, marketing, communications, the website, um, our social media channels, various pieces of online outreach. Um, and as you can see on screen here, um, the digital communications total 66,000 pounds. So I've personally really enjoyed um, the Realize Ramadan programs, the Du'as Before Dusk, etc., etc. Um, so Inshallah, you have enjoyed them uh, as well. And um, these things don't come uh, come cheap, and we have to sort of continue to sort of bear these expenses. Inshallah, with your generous donations, um, we can continue to offer these fantastic services for our community. So, um, I'd like to now um, introduce um, uh, another uh, good friend of mine, uh, another regular um, volunteer. Um, his name is Dr. Usman Bhatti. Um, he is heading up um, some really exciting health projects here um, at Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, and he recently organized um, Cambridge's biggest diabetes awareness event. Um, so it was a fantastic day um, and I want to share uh, the memories with you. Uh, so let's have a quick look at the, um, the video. Here we are today at Cambridge Central Mosque. Uh, we are having a Diabetes Wellness Day. We've invited all our diabetic patients, those that are pre-diabetic, their families, their carers, and we've got various events going on throughout the day. So, so it's great to hold events like this to raise awareness of conditions like diabetes because we really want to try and engage the community and reaching out to those people that don't normally reach out to healthcare professionals and to hold it in a community setting like this at Cambridge Centre Mosque, one of the biggest community venues in Cambridge, is a fantastic way of engaging. We've had various talks, we've got some screening in case you're worried if you're diabetic, we've got advice about food and exercise, uh, we've got some checks going on. There were so many different workshops on, different lectures, women's tai chi, men's tai chi, football, a massive range of people coming, not only Muslims. It was just all together an amazing event to be at. It's been very nice to come here, particularly as I live so nearby. And this event today has been very impressive. I've spoken to various of the specialists here and the food has been lovely, so it's been a very nice day. We really want patients and people with diabetes to be well informed about their condition, to know how to manage it and to know what's important for them and the changes, if any, that they need to make in their life. SubhanAllah, what a fantastic uh, use of this community space really inviting members of the community, the Muslim community and the non-Muslim community to engage in a really important topic. Um, and to this degree, um, Dr. Osman will also be setting up um, a health hub initiative. Now, what does a health hub actually mean? 
Okay, so um, the Health Hub idea came out of the diabetes wellness event yep. where we had an event and we felt that actually we've done diabetes. Mm -hmm. There's lots of other health needs out there. We yep. managed to speak to the local GPs, local primary care networks, and we felt that actually there's other topics mm -hmm. uh, that we can look at, other themes. Um, so we thought actually why not on a regular basis host some other events looking at other health needs. So yep. things that we don't often talk about in the community. Yeah. And um, the community at large need to know about things like end-of-life care, um, things about carers, mm -hmm. as well as other long-term conditions like high blood pressure and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So um, Cambridge Central Mosque has been really um, excited to, uh, to support these types of initiatives. Why do you think it's important that a space like this uh, supports initiatives to do with health? So it's an iconic space, yeah. it's, it's a community space, and it's an inviting space. And I think mm -hmm. that really uh, attracts people, not only to come into such a wonderful building, but also to utilize the space. Yeah, and I think yeah, totally. that, that's what it's there for, really. Yeah. And I think if we've got the space, we've got the community, let's yeah. bring them together, really. Absolutely. Um, just to inform our viewers, though, Dr. Osman, uh, massive advocate for wellness um, in, in the community, but he's also the supplier of the most sweets <laughs> and uh, sugar, sugary treats um, in our night, uh, night prayers. Um, he didn't want me to tell you this, but... Uh, everything, in right? everything, everything in moderation. moderation. Yeah, everything that's, in moderation. That's the message, guys. That's the message. Yeah. So, Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much, Dr. Osman, <laughs> no for problem. joining us. Thank you very much. So, um, just to, to reiterate again, um, it's these fantastic services that we, uh, that we put on for, um, for our community um, at large, uh, and we could not do this without the generous support um, of yourselves um, at home as you continue to, to support Cambridge Central Mosque um, on the left hand of your screen, uh, cambridgecentralmosque.org slash donate. Please visit there, easiest way to donate. Um, you can also bank transfer, give us a ring or send us a check as well. So um, I'm now very pleased um, to sort of double click further uh, onto um, the importance of your donations and where those donations actually go. So I'm very pleased to be joined by um, uh, uh, Sister Shahida Rahman. Uh, she is uh, one of the trustees here at Cambridge Central Mosque um, and ha is also actually one of the, uh, the tour guides, uh, one of a few that will be joining us uh, here today. Um, but Sister Shahida, um, we are really thrilled to have you. Um, we're going to slightly delve into the running costs of the mosque now. So um, I guess my first question um, to you is that We've got a dedicated team here, 24-7 um, in the, um, sort of when people come in, the first people that they will see are the 24-7 security here. So can you just tell us a bit about why, why we have um, these, these sort of staff uh, on site? Uh, uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum, everyone. Um, I just want to say, you know, with a building like our mosque, and I think we're very, very blessed to have uh, uh, a mosque like this in Cambridge, so any building doesn't run it on its own. Mm -hmm. We do need to have Absolutely. security. Security is one of the biggest costs. We need to protect the worshippers that come here. We need to protect the building. Um, and we also have maintenance costs, cleaning costs. So, you know, there are a number of things that mm -hmm. do go in the mosque. And a lot yeah. of people don't understand, don't realize, you know, what it actually takes to run a mosque. You know, Absolutely. Everything that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. And that's something that we see, but yeah. we want to, you know, tell the viewers, Absolutely. you know, we do need the donations yeah. to continue uh, with the running costs. I think the scale of the cost is also something that people perhaps don't realize. So we just flashed up on screen there, the scale of um, the, the safety and security costs here at Cambridge Central Mosque. It's 144,000 pounds for the year. Um, and I'm not sure many people realize how much it costs. Um, obviously, our priority is to, to make sure that all of the, the worshippers, all the visitors here um, are, are safe and secure. Uh, and we've invested a lot in, in this. Um, we have an external company um, that actually uh, offer this uh, or provide this security 24 seven. There's always someone uh, on site here at Cambridge Central Mosque. So 144,000. And then we've also got the, um, the, the, the cleaning costs um, as well. Um, cleaning aspects of this. It's such a massive building. Um, it's an eco-friendly building. Um, does that uh, sort of change the way that, uh, does that, does that make it more expensive for us to clean? Well, I, as I said earlier, you know, a building doesn't run on its yeah, own. So, you yeah. know, we have so many people coming in, um, you know, using the facilities, yeah. uh, doing all those. We need to keep it clean. And yeah. particularly when we had uh, the pandemic, that was another issue where we need to constantly clean. You know, Absolutely, we're doing much yeah. more cleaning. So obviously, cleaning comes with a cost. We've got a fantastic uh, group of people coming in every day regularly. So again, you know, that is uh, another 
a huge cost. Mm -hmm. So we need to keep maintaining that and making sure that when people come here to pray, mm -hmm. that they they see it clean. Mm -hmm. That is really, really important. Yeah. So it's inviting and for everyone to uh, to come and pray in the mosque in yeah. a clean environment. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we mentioned around, um, Sheikh Abdul Kim Murad at the start of the program mentioned how this, the, the goal of the project was to, to be the beacon of light and, and show the importance of sustainability in Islam. Um, we've invested a lot of money and alhamdulillah this is now sort of paid for in technology such as the air source heat pump, in technology such as the rainwater harvesting, um, in technology such as our um, uh, the, the sort of the well, it's not really technology, is it? It's just got a big skylight. It lets uh, lets natural light in. Um, but these technologies that we've got installed here, um, they're paid for now, but it doesn't mean that they come with no cost ongoing, right? Absolutely. And uh, for many years to come, this will be uh, a cost. And yeah. I think these costs will continue to increase. You can see with uh, how uh, things are. You know, the, the cost of living is rising yeah. for everyone. But I just want to sort of reach out to the viewers and say, you know, please donate. It's the 27th night tonight. And I want to particularly reach out to the sisters as well. Uh, reach out to the sisters and say, you know, please donate. Um, it's really important that we do continue our services. You know, you've heard earlier the kind of services that we do provide. So I'd like to tell all my friends and family who are watching as well, please donate. Uh, you know, dig deep. Uh, it's really important to, for us to continue our services and the work at the mosque. So uh, once again on screen, you'll see all of the ways that you can donate to help Cambridge Central Mosque today. Um, we have the easiest method of donation is obviously online, cambridgecentralmosque.org, our website. Uh, click the donate button as little as much as you can. Inshallah, your money will be going towards all of the fantastic services that we've spoken about today. And we've still got more to talk about. So Sister Shahida, thank you very much uh, for, for joining You're us very today. welcome. Uh, and inshallah, you'll enjoy this blessed night uh, alongside us here at Cambridge Central Mosque. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So maintenance and repair, um, a really important cost um, here at Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, the, the impact that um, these sort of green technologies has on our planet is, is profound. We are able to sort of lead the way in improving um, the impact we have on the, the local Cambridge uh, environment. But obviously all of this stuff does not come, does not come cheap and hence the maintenance and repairs um, actually totals uh, a much more significant, um, significant value than I, uh, than I thought it would. Um, so maintenance repairs total 60,000 um, pounds. And this is because a lot of the technology that we have installed here in Cambridge Central Mosque is very specialist uh, and needs sort of continued um, maintenance to make sure it's operating at maximum efficiency. So uh, on the topic of, um, uh, of facilities, maintenance and repairs, um, I'd like to um, now introduce uh, Matthew uh, Dilley. Hopefully Correct. I pronounced that correctly. Indeed. Fantastic. Uh, so later tonight, we will be having a, a live program uh, and to make sure that everyone who attends is able to hear the Imam, um, hear, the, uh, hear Sheikh Abdul Hakim's speech. Um, we've hired out a company uh, to sort out our audio um, here at Cambridge Central Mosque. So uh, Matthew, um, Thank you very much for joining us. You are the company that's here. sorting out our audio, right? Thank you. Yes, well, that's right. As of last week, yes, I took As a call on the week. M25 to uh, yeah. say, could you help? Um, and I was fascinated because I'm ashamed to say I've lived in Cambridge yeah. you know, for many, many years. And, um, you know, this went up in 2019, I yeah. believe. And I'm ashamed to say I've not been here yet. And I came with my partner on Saturday and yeah. we were just knocked out. Well, what a, what a blessed, blessed first experience. And those M25 calls are definitely the best ones to take, right? So if someone calls you on the M25, they might be calling you to invite you to, to attend Cambridge Central Mosque, so Indeed. definitely pick up. What you could also do is uh, you could ring us while you're on the M25, and you can call us and donate inshallah as well. So uh, Matthew, back to uh, sort of the, the reality of our um, services here at Cambridge Central Mosque. We've obviously um, hired out your um, organization to help uh, install some temporary um, speakers. Um, what is the problem that we've got here today at Cambridge Central Mosque with regards to audio? Well, um, so when, when the architects designed the space, uh, they obviously wanted to have the least possible impact on the beautiful aesthetics. Yeah. And so there is a type of loudspeaker um, on the uh, eastern wall, yeah. uh, which 
is designed to project over a very large distance. And it's a kind of technology, you actually share the same speakers as King's Cross Atrium, uh, the Norman Foster Atrium. Uh, they're nice. popular in atriums yeah. because you can, you can project a long way from a single point, which yeah. um, means you don't have to look at speakers everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, the downside with that is that in a transportation hub, um, the person doing the announcing is usually in a separate kiosk somewhere. Yeah. Whereas here, the microphone that's open is actually very close to where to the, the speakers are. Speaker. Yeah, so yeah. as you turn up the microphone, there's a danger that that signal goes back into the speakers. Right. So the people at the back are saying, can we have it louder? Yeah. Then it feeds back. Got and you. so the solution for this evening mm -hmm. is to experiment with some additional, we call them fill, uh, speakers which are um, equally um, positioned down the length of the room mm -hmm. uh, to try and give a little bit more localised sound. Yeah. Um, but I think after Ramadan we'd like to engage in a consultation process to try some different things mm -hmm. uh, to see if we can't get a solution which gives perfect sound in every, yeah. in every location. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, we uh, at Cambridge Central Mosque are constantly looking of, for ways to, to further improve the service that we offer um, worshippers attending. Um, and I think the audio piece, particularly for, um, for sisters in the, the back of the prayer hall, would be a, a fantastic uh, sort of improvement to the space. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew, the, the question that I'm sure is on the minds of all the viewers, and I'm going to ask it to you. How much do you think that would cost us? Well, I mean, the, the system that's in place here, I would imagine, probably cost in the order of 100 and 120,000. The good news is that that is a good investment. Yep. That's staying. Um, it's being augmented by some further mm -hmm. equipment. But yep. I would think uh, a distributed system, as we call it, which is more yep. small speakers, yep. cleverly hidden yep. in, in places, is likely to be something in the order of 50, 60,000, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's quite a considerable investment, yep. particularly because of the, the cost in installing something like that totally. um, with such a beautiful building. Yeah, and I, I absolutely agree that this, uh, and as an investment, would be very much needed for, for Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, these types of investments we can only really do um, because of your generous donations, your continued donations. So please uh, support Cambridge Central Mosque. Ways to donate, uh, again, on page here, um, cambridgecentralmosque.org. Uh, visit our website, donate as much as possible. And inshallah, uh, that money will also be used towards uh, our... Um, improvement of the um, the audio systems we have here at Cambridge Central Mosque. So um, now uh, I'm uh, welcoming a, a guest uh, again, a really good friend of mine. Um, we've spent uh, many many times together um, last year, particularly um, during the sort of the height of the pandemic. Um, as uh, Sister Shahida, our trustee, mentioned, uh, cleaning services was a really important aspect of, of the work we were doing here at Cambridge Central Mosque. We needed to make sure that uh, all of our facilities were sort of uh, really clean, making sure that uh, worshippers attending experienced a, a fantastic uh, divine um, uh, sort of space to, to pray in, but also to limit the spread of COVID-19 as well. So I'm joined here today by uh, Muhammad Farooq. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are thank you? Thank you very much for joining us. I'm good. Thank, thank you. you. How are you? Good, good. Thank Fantastic. So um, uh, Farooq, you um, worked uh, for many months here at uh, Cambridge Central Mosque. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about what did you enjoy working here? Um, see, uh, first of all, it's a house of Allah. So there's no other place you can ask for to work, you know. Yeah. It's the best place. And, and it's such a beautiful building. So... That's that's what I like to yeah. work about. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I I totally get that because um, I'm here um, to do the exact same thing. It's such a beautiful space that uh, it really makes you want to come back as much yeah, as possible. Really. Um, so uh, your your role here was in the uh, in the the cleaning team. Um, the building is such a such a sort of fantastically uh, sort of a vast space. Um, what does it take to clean a space like this, other than elbow grease? <laughs> Okay, this place, is, I mean, uh, it's a very big, beautiful place, and it takes a lot to keep it beautiful, keep it clean, uh, regular cleaning, as you said. Mm -hmm. During COVID, it was really uh, tough for us yeah. because for after every prayer, you need to you know, sanitize uh, mm -hmm. the facilities and uh, even the mats and the carpets used, used to be sanitized after every prayer. So it was a big task for us, and uh, of course... Uh, there's a big uh, garden out uh, uh, just at the entrance, so that needs to be cleaned every day. That's also a, yeah. a big task. I, I, yeah. I, I very much remember, pretty much every time I was here, in the day, 
Farouk Bai would be cleaning the fountain. I think it was his like <laughs> pet project. He'd be cleaning the fountain. Tell tell our viewers a bit about what what uh, what does the cleaning of the fountain entail, and why did you love it so much? Um, see, as uh, that's the biggest attraction yeah. in the mosque. As you enter, that's the first thing people can see. So I would love to keep the place tidy for our non-Muslim guys who walk by, and yeah. you know they. They comment and they like it. So yeah. I used to like doing the fountain because it's the first thing that people see. So yeah. yeah. Well, the, the fountain is the <laughs> sort of the centerpiece of the uh, the Islamic Garden here at Cambridge yeah. Central Mosque, um, and the cleaning services team do a fantastic job um, uh, here. And they are on site pretty much all day. Uh, so inshallah, uh, with your continued support, we will be able to. Uh, continue to sort of make sure that the Cambridge Central Mosque remains uh, as spotless as it is today. Um, I think one thing that um, uh, I want to bring to your attention is the the, the actual costs um, associated to with cleaning, and we'll bring it up on screen for you now. Um, they actually form up to uh, seventy thousand pounds. So seventy thousand pounds are annual expense for uh, cleaning services. This is an absolutely uh, vital expense um, and helps to make sure that uh, people coming today um, have the same spotless experience as people that were coming three years ago when we opened Cambridge Central Mosque. So Jazakallah Khair for all of the team that continue to to keep the upkeep going um, and also Jazakallah Khair to all of you guys um, uh, at home watching us um, that continue to support us donating generously. Uh, again to reiterate you can donate uh, via online uh, our website cambridgecentralmosque.org slash donate uh, bank transfer give us a ring um, or uh, send us a check via post as well. So uh, the next individual that I'm going to uh, have on my show uh, is uh, an individual that uh, has also, like myself, lived in Romsey, uh, this part of Cambridge, for, for many, many years. Why is it you know that? We went to the same school. Yeah. I don't associate with <laughs> We went to the same school, right? Uh, we went to the same school, um, and uh, she is uh, one of our fantastic volunteers. She's actually also training to be one of our tour guides, I and I'm the sort of the boss of the tour guides. That's why she has to, <laughs> she has to, to, to behave on this uh, yeah. on this show. So uh, first, we'll take um, a look at um, some of the events um, that we've held uh, here at Cambridge Central Mosque. Uh, one that we held very recently was the Open Iftar event. So uh, let's have a quick look at the the highlights reel uh, from that day. I would like to welcome each and every one of you to break your fast with us. Who's not hungry? Please put your hand up. <laughs> Today we've invited uh, members of our community and guests from around, Muslims, non-Muslims, all together here to share a meal together. In this special month, on this blessed night, I'm really honored to welcome so many people to tell them that fasting is all about abstaining and self-discipline. And I congratulate all different members of our communities who have come together here to celebrate our diversity. The Open Iftar is a true representation of what Islam is all about, to share uh, in society, in the community, bring people together from all walks of life, break bread, make lasting friends, and most importantly, share the values and the essence of what Islam is all about. It was wonderful to reflect about Jewish and Muslim and Christian traditions of fasting, and I think for a lot of Christians, there's been a period of rediscovering that spiritual practice of fasting and what it means and how it ties to charity and how it ties to prayer. So lovely to have the witness of this community and to be invited. And Ooh, there was good food afterwards. <laughs> They're eating biryani, samosas, onion bhajis. It's great to have everyone together at Cambridge Central Mosque. We can stand together and we are united. And the, the, the human solidarity is something that we all cherish and we want to prevail. So I really enjoyed that Open Iftar event. Um, just seeing the food there as we approach uh, Maghrib time. Uh, definitely one of my favourite in recent times. Um, Rashida, what was your uh, sort of favourite event that you've been to in recent times? It has to be the Open Iftar. It was gorgeous. I've always wanted to be part of it. Yeah. So being there, witnessing it all was just glorious. And it was just so Fantastic. beautiful Fantastic. Uh, as well. And it's these types of events that we can put on here at Cambridge Central Mosque that really sort of engage the community and obviously give us 
well-deserved food, Absolutely. right? Well-deserved food. Um, so tell us a bit about um, your uh, volunteering activities here. What does, it, what does it like to be a volunteer here at Cambridge Central? I Mosque? love it. I love just coming here, being at ease in this setting and just being around lovely people uh, as well and just making friendship, you know, making new friends and whatnot. So it's been lovely. And like volunteering during Ramadan has been joyous, despite, you know, being tired or whatnot. It's been worthwhile seeing these regular worshippers mm -hmm. seeing me every day, giving me food, packaging me food and giving it to me. Great, I'll take it. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's been lovely and... I hope to continue with it as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that brings me on to um, sort of the, the importance of the events that we hold here. Obviously, they're really important to Rashida. Um, but community outreach is, is, is a significant and really important cost, I think, here at Cambridge Central, Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, they include uh, events, services, community support, uh, events like the Open Iftar. Um, and then we've also got various other miscellaneous um, expenses um, uh, that that, uh, that are incurred here at Cambridge Central Mosque. We've got travel, we've got fundraising activities, kitchen consumables, staff and volunteer training. Um, so it's really important that we continue to spend in this space. Uh, and together, community outreach and miscellaneous costs uh, are 32,400 and 22,500. So, uh, pretty significant uh, and again once again to reiterate we could not do this without your continued support so please please donate generously inshallah Allah will reward you for your generous donations so uh, we're now going to be joined uh, by a, a fellow um, a fellow guided tour uh, um, in, or fellow tour guide I can't get my words out at this stage of the night definitely need my uh, my dates and water <laughs> Um, so, fellow fellow tour guide, um, Mr. Isan Aslam, thank you very much for joining you're us. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So, um, you're a long-term uh, uh, attendee at Cambridge Central Mosque, and I hear you're also uh, very interested uh, and, uh, in architecture, a student yes. of architecture. Um, you sort of impart some of this knowledge on people that come onto your tours. Um, tell us a bit about your experience as a guide uh, and how has that um, helped the people in our wider community engage with Cambridge Central I, Mosque? I think it's been an amazing experience. I've been one of the lucky ones. Yep. Um, I became a guide right at the beginning in April 2019 yes. when the mosque opened. Yep. Um, and we've seen the growth um, of, the, of the numbers and the interest and it's, it's been really quite an extraordinary experience um, engaging with the community and such a diverse range of people uh, from the university, from the city, mm -hmm. people from around the villages, from um, overseas, you yeah. know, we get people from all, all sorts of places and yeah. very, very large numbers. Mm -hmm. And I think that the tour guide teams must have done thousands of people. I think, I think we've yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely thousands. taken thousands yeah. of people. Yeah, um, through this sort of transformative experience that we have in the tour, so we're very pleased to be to have you uh, as a, as as one of the guides, um, because you have this sort of fantastic architecture knowledge as well. So we were recently um, nominated for the Reba Sterling Prize, um, one of the most prestigious architectural awards uh, in the UK. Um, just tell us a bit about uh, what uh, what this was uh, and why was CCM chosen to be uh, to be in the shortlist. Well, this Reba is halal. Uh, this is a Royal <laughs> Institute of British Architects. Um, they have a prestigious award uh, every year. It's called the Sterling Prize. And they also have various other uh, Reba awards. And we were blessed uh, to be selected, to be nominated, to be shortlisted for the Sterling Prize, which is like the Oscar of uh, architecture. So we're really, really blessed um, with that. Um, it's really... Um, the various features within the, within the masjid, um, both architectural, uh, environmental, and the community uh, parts of it, and that's really, really uh, in, important. Uh, this is a community building, and it, it, it engages and it interacts and it reaches out uh, towards the wider community within Mill Road and, and in Cambridge at large and within the UK. And so we're really blessed to have so many people taking an interest in the community uh, building which we yeah, have. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Hassan. Thank exactly. you very much for joining us. Thank you. So just to reiterate, um, tours uh, are just one of the many fantastic ways that you can engage with Cambridge Central Mosque. Um, inshallah, uh, another way that you can do so is by donating generously um, so that we can continue to provide these, these fantastic services for our community. But uh, internal services are not the only thing that, uh, that Cambridge Central Mosque is involved in. We have a lot of outreach activities, community initiatives, etc., etc. And here to talk about um, one of those specific initiatives is uh, one of our administrative staff members, Gents Haydini. Um, but just before we introduce him, um, let's have a look at one of the exciting events that we held um, for the little ones in our community over at uh, Cambridge United.
Thank you for coming and welcome to Cambridge United Football Club. Well, loads of smiles there in that video. Uh, Gents, how was that visit? Um, did the children enjoy visiting Cambridge United? Yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing. Um, the children really enjoyed it. Uh, we got amazing feedback from the parents. Yeah. Uh, they were given a tour of Abbey Stadium, yeah. the local Cambridge United um, uh, football club. Uh, there was educational sessions, yeah. an active science session, as you can see in the video. So um, it was beautiful seeing so many smiles. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the children and really did enjoy And it's themselves. the smiles that really stay with you, right? Um, and it's the smiles that we're really keen on fostering throughout our community. So um, what else do we get up to uh, against uh, in terms of community outreach? Um, I know we did a whole bunch of things um, during the, the COVID pandemic as well. Yeah, really COVID um, was for us uh, a moment where we had to really step up. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, you know, we created a response service where yeah. we, we help people who were in self-isolation. Mm -hmm. We helped them with uh, picking up prescriptions, dry food supplies. Yeah. Um, it was also the students who were um, stranded, a mm -hmm. lot of international students. We yeah. provided them hot food packs um, during Ramadan. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, our local hospital, Royal Papworth Hospital, we, we provided over 2,000 hot food packs for them over a Masha period Allah. of two months. Uh, to the critical care unit yeah. um, uh, who were dealing with the COVID patients. So it yeah. was, um, yeah, for, for us it was an honour to be able to, to yeah. support them. Fantastic. Um, and to, to really show the true face of Islam. Yeah. And obviously, we could only do this with your continued support. All of this community outreach had a significant cost associated with it. So inshallah, um, please continue to donate generously um, and as we continue to keep these events uh, going uh, for our community um, for many, many years to come, inshallah. Uh, so now um, uh, we had hoped uh, to be joined by uh, Abdullah Alamun uh, from Islamic Relief, one of our regular partners. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't join us today, um, but he has sent this message for you guys. So um, let's have a look. Poverty, Cambridge, never associate the two. Many will be surprised to know that this has been an issue for many years and it's only got worse due to the pandemic. So today, Cambridge Central Mosque and Islamic Relief have partnered to help 120 families by giving food packs. And we're going to be working alongside 15 local food banks as well. And in each food pack, there will be rice, lentils, beans, pasta and many other items. So we urge you and ask you all to support us, support Cambridge Central Mosque, support Islamic Relief for the fantastic work that they do. Thank you. Apologies for the uh, slight technical issue there. We actually showed you the video of some of the work that um, Abdullah and his team were involved in with the winter food drive with Islamic Relief. Uh, we'll show you the video uh, of Abdullah. A big thank you to him at the end of the show, inshallah. Uh, so I'm now uh, really pleased to be joined by, um, by Sarah uh, Dickinson, who's uh, one of our neighbours uh, over at the Edge Cafe and also um, the Food Hub coordinator. Now, the uh, Edge Cafe um, was, uh, is, a, I think, a really just like Cambridge Central Mosque, a pillar of our community. It's been um, a part, I've been there many, many times um, and it really is a community space for everyone sort of gathering. So Sarah, thank you very much for taking the time to, to join us. Hopefully you've enjoyed the rest of the, uh, the I, programme. I really have, it's been very heartwarming. Good stuff, good stuff. So um, Sarah, um, 
How have uh, the donations received by um, or donated by uh, Cambridge Central Mosque helped the um, the food bank? So it, it's um, the food hub. It picks we pick up food from supermarkets mm -hmm. that are going out of date. Yeah. Um, that's uh, uh, run by Fair Share Neighbourly. Yeah. Um, and that's mostly perishables. Yeah. So your donations have been really instrumental mm -hmm. because we can. It's rice and yeah. um, chickpeas and olives and. Uh, wonderful things like that yeah. um, and it's and I also really like it because we can help um, sort of international yeah. community yeah, in Cambridge I really and thing, I it? really loved it when they come through and totally. I can I can um, find things that they that would they rather want. enjoy yeah. more yeah. than perhaps totally. uh, other people totally and yeah. we really mentioned around how diversity is such an yeah. important aspect of um, the stuff that we do here at Cambridge Central Mosque um, and I also hear that um, you're keen to sort of diversify the, um, the the food on offer at the um, at the food bank, and you're introducing halal meats to the edge. I'd really, we really would love to work very closely with the mosque, mm -hmm. and I think we're already on amazing terms. And I'd like to stretch that further to. Uh, the wonderful thing about the edge is we're very inclusive mm -hmm. and you know if there's uh, dietary things that yeah. um, other people you know need uh, caring for um, then I like to step up and halal me meals um, uh, you know really interesting mm -hmm. little project I'm yeah. very keen to know how we can combine both in mm -hmm. the kitchen well, look, we, so we need a lesson first <laughs> we, we very much appreciate um, appreciate your support um, yeah. and also uh, your uh, sort of good and neighbourly uh, uh, sort of uh, advice uh, mm -hmm. from time to time. So thank you very much, thank uh, you. Sarah, uh, for joining us today. So um, I guess just to remind those uh, online, um, Jazakallah Khair, thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, the whole uh, essence of today's programme has been about bringing to life what we do here at Cambridge Central Mosque, the impact it has on the community. We've heard from so many different people. Um, we've heard about Shahada ceremonies, the Nikah ceremonies that we have, Janaza services, various pieces of community engagement. We've got events that happen here. You've heard from our Imams and the, um, uh, and the, the newly founded Madrasa program as well. So just to reiterate, all of these fantastic things that we're doing here at Cambridge Central Mosque and all of the expenses inc incurred um, because of these activities are all funded by your generous donations. So please, please, um, a humble request, donate to Cambridge Central Mosque. There's multiple ways to donate. CambridgeCentralMosque.org, our website, is perhaps the easiest way to do so. You can use your smartphone. There's a QR code there as well. Go online, click donate, and inshallah, Allah will reward you for your continued uh, support of Cambridge Central Mosque. So... As we approach uh, the Maghrib prayer on this uh, auspicious night, um, we are sort of left to sort of reflect, uh, sort of final reflections on, on the absolutely blessed month that we've had. Um, we've really thoroughly enjoyed um, this, this short month. Every year, I say, it comes and it goes just so, so quickly. Um, but really, we have a fantastic opportunity here, the 27th night. Um, to, to, to make a fantastic contribution to this fantastic space. And inshallah, you'll take up this opportunity um, and, and reap the rewards for many, many years to come. So uh, from myself, uh, I've been Shoaib Shahid. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'll be leaving you um, with um, the, um, the final video. Um, it will be from um, Mr. Iqbal Khan. Um, and inshallah, you will be able to join us in person uh, for our program starting later on today at 10.30 p.m. And we'll be going through into the night uh, and really uh, remembering Allah uh, on this very auspicious of nights. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalatu wassalam ala ashraf al-mursaleen Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to all of you from the Dubai International Financial Center in Dubai My family and I have a special place for the Cambridge Central Mosque in our hearts as our late daughter, Baraka, who studied PPS in Emmanuel College, was a great ardent supporter of the planned mosque. From day one, as she joined the Islamic Society, as 
a member. She became an ardent follower and supporter of Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad's vision of the Cambridge Central Mosque. She embraced the vision wholeheartedly because she felt that the mosque would bring the Islamic and English architectural and spiritual traditions together. This made her feel more British and more Muslim at the same time. She started fundraising from early stages of the mosque. I remember when the land was purchased, Baraka would cycle to it and pray there. And as she would lift her musalla, one day she called me. She said, Dad, I saw the finished mosque as a symbol of the divine. Later on, Baraka was to be diagnosed in 2013 with lung cancer. However, she accepted the diagnosis with full Iman and Yaqeen. And she said there is goodness in this diagnosis. And she continued the fundraise for Cambridge Central Mosque and even walked with an oxygen device to raise funds for the mosque. One of the last conversations I had with Baraka on 17th February 2016 before she passed away on the 18th February 2016 was about Cambridge Central Mosque. She urged me to continue to be involved with the mosque in any and every capacity I could and ensure that it was not only completed, but it had an endowment which allows it to realize all its aspirations and the vision of the mosque under the leadership of Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad. She said to me very clearly, distinctly, I want our Cambridge Central Mosque as a place where young men and women of all faiths or no faith could come and find peace, tranquility and solace. Every time my family and I visit the Cambridge Central Mosque, we find peace, tranquility and solace, reminding me about the fulfillment of Baraka's wish and vision. It is for these reasons I support Cambridge Central Mosque and I hope you too will do that, inshallah. Please pray for my daughter, Baraka Khan. Visit her website, www.barakakhan.com and contribute generously to this beautiful mosque so that we can continue to receive the blessings for our future generations as Baraka would have wanted. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.